So again, today I'm going to show you how to make this bag using the felting technique. It's really cool. I love felting bags. So let's go ahead and get started on it. Okay, for this project you're going to need a size I9 or it is a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And later on, towards the end of the project, when we do the flowers, you're going to need a J 6 millimeter. We'll start with, for the, port, the major portion of the bag, we're going to do it with the eye, the five and a half. And also you're going to need 100% wool yarn. It has to be 100% wool. You can't do it with cotton and you can't do it with acrylic. It has to be wool. And it needs to be 100%. If you have like 80% wool and you don't want to buy more, that'll probably work. But I would recommend getting 100%. And you can get it in all different brands. This is the Patton's brand. But um, yeah, you just need to make sure it's wool. I mean, it won't work with any other kind of yarn. Because when you put it, to felt it, you're going to have to put it in a washer and in hot, hot water. And the wool, when it gets hot, it's just going to shrink up and turn into solid fabric. And acrylic and cotton won't do that. It's not going to do, it's just going to look the same if you use acrylic or cotton. So just make sure that it's 100% wool, whatever brand you find. It's okay if it's worsted wool, that's what I'm using. Or if it's not, that's fine. And when you make these, or when you felt anything, you have to count for shrinkage. It's going to shrink about 30% of your project. So whenever you do the bag or whatever you're doing, just when you get the size, when you get it done, just remember, like I have a little square here I'm working on. Um, just remember when you get done, it's going to be about 30% smaller after it's done shrinking than what it is now. So you might want to make it a little bit bigger than what you normally would. And you need to have access to a, a, a washing machine, if you can, or take it to the laundromat with you. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. You wanna start with a chain of 45. Now, I already previously started the main portion of my bag, so I'm gonna show you in a smaller scale. So pay no attention to my stitch count because it's not right. Start with a chain of 45. And then on the third chain from the hook, we don't count the one that's on the hook, we're going to do a double crochet into it. So yarn over, go in, grab it, three loops on your hook, yarn over, go through the first two, and the second two. And then we're going to do a double crochet in every stitch for the remainder of your chain. So it's just one double in each stitch all the way down your chain. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, Grab your yarn, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through the first two, and yarn over and go through the second two. Yarn over, the next stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. And this is double crochets, all the way to the end. So let's continue this, one double, and each stitch all the way down to the end.
Okay, when you get down here to the last stitch, I'm gonna get ready to double crochet in my last stitch. We're gonna do three double crochet in that same stitch since it's at the end. So there's one. and three and then I'm just going to work around it. I'm just going to follow it around and do double crochets in every stitch this way. So put one in this stitch right here. Oops. And then right here. So it's just one in every stitch now to go back to the beginning. like that and then when you get back here to the last stitch three double crochets back in this corner so one just like we did three at the other end we're gonna do three right here two three and then we're just gonna slip stitch up here in our beginning chain three where we started just like that now it's going to be easy from here on out. It's going to be the same. We're going to chain three and then it's going to be one double crochet in every stitch all the way around. Just like this. One double. You want to continue that one double crochet all the way around in every stitch all the way around and you want to continue that till you get over here and then you're going to slip stitch into that chain three chain three again one double crochet all the way around slip stitch into the top of this chain three chain three again all the way around double crochets so and we're just going to continue to do that double crochet in every stitch, slip stitching in your chain three. You're going to want to do that for about 20 rows. So I'm going to go ahead and finish mine up and I'll see you back here in a second. Okay, got kind of a mess going on up here. Um, I did, but you can do it higher if you want. But remember we have to account for shrinkage that's going to happen when you felt it. Um, usually they shrink, I don't know, about 30%. I think that's about the rule, so I don't know. So if this, just look at your piece of fabric or your bag, and this picture is about 30% smaller. And if that's a good enough size for you, that's fine. If not, you can go a little taller. So now I'm going to start on the handles. So I'm going to, you're going to need four stitch markers. I'm just going to use these pieces of yarn and we're going to mark one here, one here, and then the same on the other side. So you want to count in 16 stitches from the corner over and then you want to do the same back here. Count 16 from the corner. So there should be 32 stitches in between this space right here. And then we want to do the same over here. So 
16, and you want to do the other side. Okay, there's where we're going to put our starter handles. So I'm still using my size I, it's a five and a half millimeter. Okay, here's your stitch marker. You want to count this, let me go down closer here. Okay, you want to count this space that the stitch marker's in and go over four stitches. And we're going to start right there. So stick your yarn in there and do a chain to lock it. And then single crochet back in that same spot. And then single crochet in these other stitches and in the one that has the stitch marker in it. So just like that and we can take that out because we're not gonna need that anymore. I feel crowded up here. I got so much stuff up here. Okay, and then you want to chain one and then turn it over. And then we're going to do single crochets in these stitches. So one, should have four, two, three, and then don't forget this guy on the corner. Sometimes he's hard to, to see. Four, and you want to chain one. And we're going to turn again. And single crochet across again. The four stitches. Forget this guy again. Oops. Chain one and turn again. Do your four stitches again. And chain one, but again. And what we're doing, we're just trying to do it enough to where, when you take these rings, and I got these rings, uh, I actually bought these I think at Walmart too, so they're, they're pretty easy to find, you can find them anywhere. I'm just trying to make it big enough that I can fold it and sew these rings on. So I'm going to go a few more rounds here. And just keep... Um, chaining one and turning and doing the four single crochets across. You can do it for the length that you want it. I did. This will be my sixth row. I just stop and I just keep testing it <clears throat> until it looks good enough for me. Do it again. Just keep track of how many you do so you can do the same. 
on all four spots. Okay, I'm going to do this last one and that will be a total of eight rows of single crochet that I did. And like I said, if you want to do more, you want your it to be bigger, that's fine. Let me see. Let me test it just to make sure. I know I said eight. I'm gonna do two more because it will uh, it will shrink up a little bit. So I'm gonna do a total of ten, and I'm probably boring you watching me do this. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. Ten rows. And then you want to cut your string off longer. Because that's what you're going to tie it with. Or sew it with. And then get your yarn needle. And get your ring here. And basically you just easy put fold it over and just put some stitches through both sides. And you want to do it kind of good because once it goes through the washer, you want to make sure that it's tight. That's so you don't want nothing coming done when it's washing because that's a mess to oops, it's a mess to try to fix it. So I'm just going to view a few more extra stitches, more stitches than I probably normally would. Oh. Okay, then I'm just going to hide it in my tail. And you want to weave it in pretty good too so we don't start coming undone in the washing machine. And then for the handle, what I did is just um, double crochet. I did a chain. I'm 65. I won't do it all, but I did a chain of 65, and then on the third chain from the hook. I did, don't count this one on the hook, I did a double crochet. Just like that, just like we did with the purse. And then I just did one in every stitch after that. One double crochet down the length of the chain. So that's all I did and um, leave long tails on them so you can tie it in like this. And then On this part, 
I'm just going to sew it onto this loop or this ring the same way I sewed that one on. I'm just going to fold it over the top like that and fold it over the back and then I'm going to sew it. Probably make it hang over about an inch on the back there. And I want to sew it pretty good too. I don't want it coming undone. Okay, hide your tail just like you did before. Really good. There. And that's what you want to do. And my, if I do it right, after it gets washed, it should shrink up a bit and you'll be able to see that ring a little bit better but something like that and then so you want to do that same thing on all four sides make this and attach your ring and then you just attach your handle and bring it over and you'll attach your handle to this loop that's over here after you make this so let me start this side again It was, since over here we started, since I'm working, I'm right-handed, I started four rows away from the stitch marker and worked that way. But here I'm going to start at the stitch marker and work that way, if that makes sense. So at the stitch marker, I can pull it out because I don't need it anymore. Chain the lock. Single crochet back in that same spot and single crochet in the next three spaces to make a total of four stitches just like that chain one flip it and four stitches across so we're going to do that for ten rows and unless you did more you just do as many rows as you did the first time and then I'm gonna just sew on the rest of my ring and then I'm going to make my other handle it was the chain of 65 and then the double crochets and I'm going to sew them all on and then I'll get right back with you and I'll show you how to make some of these flowers to put on it now I'm going to show you how to make some of these flowers and these leaves to sew on um, on these I up my needle size to a J10 or it's a six millimeter crochet hook for the roses and the leaves both. So you want to start with a chain for the roses. We'll do them first of 37. If you know a different way to make a rose, that's fine. This is just one way that I know. And then on the sixth chain from the hook, we don't count this one, we're going to do a double crochet. So, skip five and on the sixth chain, 
do a double crochet into it. Then we're going to chain two. And we're going to do another double back in that same spot. Just like that. We're going to chain two again. And then this is going to be what we're going to repeat from now on. All the way the rest of the chain. We're going to skip two stitches and then a third stitch. We're going to do a double crochet. Chain two. And then a double crochet back in that same spot. And then chain two. And then skip two chains. And a third chain. Do a double crochet. Chain two. Double crochet back in that same spot. Chain two. Skip two chains again and a third chain. And double crochet. Chain two. Double crochet back in that same spot. Chain two. Skip the next two chains and then the third chain. Double crochet. Chain two. Double crochet back into that same spot. Chain two. Skip the next two and then the third one. And double crochet. Chain two. Double crochet back into the same hole. Chain two. Skip two stitches in the third stitch. Double crochet. Chain two. Double crochet back in that same stitch. Chain two. Skip two. And the third. Double. Chain two. Double back in the same spot. Chain two. Skip two again, and then the third chain. Double. Chain two. Double back in the same spot. Chain two. Skip two again, and then the third spot. Double, chain two, double in the same spot, chain two, skip two again, double, chain two, and double. And I didn't come out even, I actually have an extra stitch at the end, and that's okay. If you came out, I must have. Missed a stitch somewhere, but you ain't gonna notice that. If you came out even, that's good. If not, don't worry about it because that's all. It's all gonna be rolled up, and you're not gonna see it. I must have miscounted somewhere. Okay, so here we're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and we're gonna turn. Now we're gonna make the the petals. So we're gonna start in this chain two space right here, the very first one. We're gonna, this chain three is gonna count as a double crochet. So we need to do six. And since this counts as one, we're only gonna do five more to make a total of six double crochets. So we'll count those as one, two, we need to make six. Three, four, five, there's six double crochets, and then move over to this next space, and just do one single crochet, like that. Move back over to this smaller spot, six double crochets again. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. Move over here to the next spot, the big space, single crochet. One time. Move over to this next space, six double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. The next space, single crochet. And then move over to this space, the smaller spot, right here. Six double crochets. One, oops, two, three, four, five, six. Next space, single crochet. Next space, six doubles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next space, single crochet. Now, in the next of these, rest of these small, small spaces, we're going to do nine doubles. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, and nine, and then single crochet back into the next space, and then nine doubles in the next one, single crochet, nine doubles, single crochet, all the way to the end. So I'm going to go ahead and finish mine. Jump on my last spot, and I'm just going to single crochet in it, like that. And I'm going to cut a long string. And make a little knot. Okay. Now we're going to start down here where we begun. And go ahead and get your yarn needle. And use that long string that we used. And how it's going to look is... It's just going to... I always kind of roll it all up first. Just roll it. Oh, I think this is a really pretty flower. It's a really nice way to make a, a rose. Like that. And get it how you want it. And then I just flip it over. And I use my needle. And I just go tie it up directly through all this loose stuff in the back. And I just keep going around through it all. Until it gets tight. Remember to get it kind of extra good so it don't fall apart on us. And then I usually just go up through the center once and grab the center piece and sew it down so it don't move. And that's all there is. It's really easy. And hide that tail. Like that. 
and then you can kind of fluff it up. Yeah. That's that flower. And then you want to leave this other piece on, and that's what we'll sew it to the bag with. And then the leaves are just as easy, if not lots easier. I'm going to leave a long string again so we can tie it on. And use your J hook too again. Start with the slip knot. Do a chain of 10. Second chain from the hook, we're going to do a single crochet. We don't ever count the one that's on our hook. So right here, do one single. The next one is going to be a half double. So we're going to yarn over. And we're going to go through all three loops. And then we do another half double in the next one. All three loops. And then we're going to do a double crochet in the next. another double crochet in the next another double crochet in the next so that's three double crochets in a row and then we're going to go do the half double in the next all three another half double and then at the end here, we're going to do three singles. One, all in the same stitch. Two, three, just like that so far. Now we're just going to turn it and we're going to work on the other side of the chain. So basically we're going to do what we just did, all these stitches, the exact same on this side. So we did our three singles, so next we need to do a half double in the next stitch. And then another half double. And then we're going to do three doubles in a row. two half doubles in a row two half doubles single crochet and then we did that one single now we're just going to slip stitch just find a stitch over here anywhere probably the very first one if you can and slip stitch it in there if you can get it find it the very first one. If not, just do whichever one you kind of see. Because once this all gets felted, you're not going to be able to see anything like that. And that's the leaf. Really easy. Leave a long tail so you can sew it on. So it was the chain 10 and then it was a single, two half doubles, three doubles, two half doubles, and then the three singles at the end and then we just flipped it and we did did two half doubles, three doubles, two half doubles, single, and slip stitch. Just the exact same on the opposite side. So you can do as many flowers as you want and as many leaf stuffs as you want. And you can sew them on in any way that you want. So I'm just going to kind of set them all up. And see what I think looks good and when you sew them on you just sew them on like you would sew anything on but you have to make sure you sew them really good so when they go in the washing machine that they don't fall off so I'll probably put them something like that I got tails everywhere so 
sewing them. Just sew them like you would sew anything else. Come on here, wherever you're going to put them. And just sew them on. Just make sure that you sew them on really good. So just go through the back. And I'll probably come up through. And then back down. And I'll probably just grab, go under and grab some of the pink back through. Just do whatever you think. Just so you feel like it's tight enough that it can withstand a being, being washed. And then when you think it's good enough, just hide your tail. Flip it. And that's it. That's how you're going to sew everything on. And wherever you want to sew it. So I'm just going to go ahead and start to sew on the leaves. If sew them on. I probably try to sew them around like this here. I'll do one real quick. Just so they don't shrivel up or anything when they shrink. And just kind of maybe go around the edges of them. So they're kind of sewed flat. I mean, you don't have to do this. I just think they might hold better like this. And I might leave some of them where they're not so flat. It just depends. You do whatever you feel like what works for you. Okay, and I'm just going to hide that tail. And I'm just going to keep sewing everything on. There we go. So I'm going to continue with mine. And I'll show you when I'm finished. I got everything sewed on the way that I want it. So now it's time to felt it. I always get nervous because I don't know how it's going to turn out. And I, it's like six or seven hours of work here. And I hate for it to be, look kind of cruddy, but. You never know. You just got to do it. Usually, I think they've always turned out okay, but I still get nervous. So, what you need to do is get some regular laundry detergent, whatever you have. And it just takes a little bit. just helps the... That's about like that. Like a quarter of a cap, I guess. Just a little bit. It just helps the cycle along the felting process along and then I recommend like a uh, just a pair of blue jeans old pair of blue jeans or something because what happens 
when you put this in the water, it's going to agitate against the blue jeans and this rough stuff. It helps it. So we're going to put this in the hottest cycle and the longest cycle. So for the longest amount of time on the hottest cycle you got, put it in the washing machine with your blue jeans and with your little bit of soap and let it go. Now what you can do is you can check it every couple of minutes, see what it looks like, and you can decide if it's felted enough for you or not. You can let it go until it's done washing, look at it, and if it ain't felted enough for you, put it back in. But I would recommend um, taking it out before the spin cycle because it might, it'll probably wrinkle it up a little bit. So you just kind of got to watch it, and when it starts to spin, I take it out and um, we'll take it out and then you kind of just gently wring the water out of it and get it to the shape you want and then lay it flat and it'll dry that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw mine in, all this stuff in, and I'm excited. I'll let you know when it's done. So mine out of the washer and I kind of just squeezed all the excess water out. Now I'm just using this old towel and squeezing it getting all the water out of it as much as possible and if you're at if you don't have a washer at home and you're at the laundry mat and you can't stop it to take it out of the spin cycle it's okay I mean it might be a little bit wrinkly but you'll just have to work a little bit harder to get the creases out of it so but that's fine it isn't isn't gonna do anything and that's it I think it turned out pretty cool I'm happy with it I love felted stuff. I love felt bags. And if one of your flowers or leaves came off or came undone a little bit, I would just take some more of the wool yarn and sew it back on and then put it back in the washer for a few more minutes and refelt that piece of yarn that you used to sew on. And that's it. That's the bag. I think it's cool. And if you make a felted bag or anything felted, now that you know how to do it, I'd love to see a picture of it. If you could post it on the Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page, that'd be cool. I'll put a link below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I want to build my channel up so I can keep making tutorials. And thanks for watching. Until next time, have a good night.